So he went from zero to 100K a month in a brand new niche, saturated niche, most competitive niche out there in six months. I'm gonna drop you guys a cheat sheet on how I set up all my ads. Can I get a cheat sports. sheet on how you make your slides? But if you can capitalize on it, you're going to be able to scale your agency very quickly. That is not the name of the game. You have to know how to focus on the right things. In terms of the wheel, the wheel's there. Don't reinvent it. Follow the cheat sheet that Joel has built us. This is <gasps> oh my God, look at Joel. Who wants to win a flat screen TV? Vimal, dude, congratulations, 100K a month. Let me tell you guys a quick story about Vimal. A few months ago, uh, or I don't know when, you, like six months ago when you joined Agency Lab, you're like, should I go into like the most saturated niche on the planet, dental? And I'm like, probably not. He's like, all right, fuck it, I'm gonna do it anyways. <laughs> and uh, he's like, I'm gonna prove to you that it can work. And uh, you pretty much stopped your other division for your agency, working with auto dealerships, car dealerships, to go all in on dental, which is one of the most saturated and most competitive niches that also requires the most amount of time to break into because it's really hard to break into it. And Vimal said to me, Joel, the only thing I asked for is once I hit 100K a month, can I do a workshop for everyone? What a good person. This guy, is. his heart is full of gold, guys. In my in my eyes, like what Vimal, you're as wealthy as you can ever be. You've got people that really love you, people that really care for you. I know everyone here has only experienced amazing things by working with you and you've helped every single person here and everyone freaking loves you. This guy was literally at a workshop and I had to go to the airport and he literally left. Uh, we were at this live event. He literally left to just help me out. Like he just wants to help. And uh, I'm just grateful to call this man my friend. And I'm also grateful to uh, call him my, uh, if you guys need to get into exotic cars, he knows a lot about vehicles. I'll tell you what cars to buy or what not to buy. So that's a little side note about about Vimal. And uh, this guy's going to make a lot of money. I think uh, this is just the beginning for Vimal. So he went from zero to 100k a month in a brand new niche, saturated niche, most competitive niche out there in six months. And uh, with that in mind, Vimal, what do you want to share with us today? What do you think? I want to share everything I know and what got me here. Um, but of course, uh, make sure that uh, I pay thanks to the community because it's definitely the number one reason um, I think what Joel uh, instills in people, the community that he's built, um, the pieces that we have inside of here and the people that we have to lean on is more valuable than a boardroom, more valuable than money, more valuable than advice. And, um, you know, that's definitely the number one thing that I've leaned into in order to uh, develop my identity that has allowed me to be successful, you know, in the short term, you know, it, it did happen pretty pretty quick. Um, so that's my number one goal, like Joel said, was to, is if I did do it, was to come back and, uh, you know, give back to the community by trying to just impart as much as I know. Um, because as many of you are today, you know, you're just trying to figure out how to grow your agency. You want to do a good job for your clients and you want to make money while doing it. And that's really the three things that I want to do. Um, and if that resonates with you, drop a one in the chat. vimo has been waiting to see some. Yeah, baby. I've been waiting for the one in the chat. <laughs> There we go. It's the whole reason I signed up for Agency Lab. No, so really, he just wanted uh, to feel the power. Anybody who ever needs anything, feel free to hit me up. What I put together today for the group was um, part a little bit about me and what I did. And then the second part is a little bit more tactical. And then I have a little bit of a bonus cheat sheet to wrap it all up. Um, so let's jump right in without further ado. Oh, and we're giving away a TV at the end. That was Vimmel's idea. Yeah, I was like, it's football season, Joel. We got to get everybody in. If Let's get them pumped up. Let's, let's give away a TV. Let's let's make somebody's entire can I, can I like be a part of it i'm gonna put it. i've never been a part of the raffle i'm gonna put myself in there <laughs> and everyone on my team get in there too that's awesome <laughs> All right, I'm going to share my screen. Y'all let me know when you can see it. All right, so to piggyback off of what Joel said, what I wanted to talk about is that 100K mark and highlight truthfully in my eyes how it's not necessarily a number. It A lot of it has to do with an identity shift of who you are, the way you operate and the way you see things. That is very important if you want to get to 100K. So I want to talk about in the first part, a little bit about the things that I did in order to get in shape to become what I call a 100K entrepreneur. So when you have success, 
success, if you're not prepared for it, it will come and go quickly. And that's one of the things I think that everybody fears, right? Everyone fears that they're going to have some form of success and it's not going to be lasting. And I think that's what drives and dictates most of our actions. So I wanted to kind of um, talk about what that journey has been like, some of the fears that I even still have. So so my big promise in, in terms of if you guys hang out here with me for the next 30 to 45 minutes, right? It's basically just that you will understand the game that you're playing, right? Building and scaling an agency a little bit better. You guys have heard the checkers versus chess thing, right? We want to make sure that you're playing chess when everybody else is playing checkers. That is what Agency Lab does for you. It allows you to shortcut, get to mastermind level uh, knowledge quickly, access it and be able to implement it. Um, so that's kind of the first part in terms of like who I am, what I did. I know a couple of, you know, my story, um, but I actually started out in car sales. So I sold used cars and new cars for almost five years before getting into the finance department before eventually one night packing up my stuff and leaving and then got into this company that did marketing, direct mail, that kind of stuff. I was 1099, didn't really have a job. I just knew I wanted to leave the car dealership and didn't know what I wanted to do, stumbled into marketing. So we were trying to grow a direct mail company and, um, you know, tied that to the automotive side of things. And we that's where we scaled our automotive agency. And it was, I did it all by myself. We, you know, we hit good numbers. We had about 20 some odd clients, but again, I didn't understand the business model of running an agency. A lot of people think you launch ads, you get results for people. That is not the business model of having an agency. That is being like a marketer or being like a media buyer. Running an agency is a whole lot more than that. So um, that's when I found agency lab and kind of unlocked that. Right. So what are we doing now? So we we do have a full team, you know, we do over 100K in MRR, um, you know, all our people are in-house. We have an, like an office, we're in Oviedo, all these people come to work with me every day. Um, we do amazing things. And that's really been my dream in terms of being able to build a team, being able to offer a lot to all these people around me, being able to maximize my impact. Um, and that's why I'm here today sharing a lot of this with you guys. So just so you know, in terms of time, if you think you know how long it was between the guy who was at the car dealership and now drop it in the chat. I want to see if anyone's got like a good handle on how long that took. Yo, Vimo, by the way, you're crushing it. Oh, okay. <laughs> this presentation is fire. Six months, two year, one year, three years, seven years, 4.5 months, 1.5 year. All right, cool. Three years. Three years. Uh, so eight seconds, eight seconds. Uh, no, no, that we're not talking about something. Um, so the, uh, <laughs> this is it actually took about a year, but in, it, from finding agency lab to where we're at now actually only took six months. Um, wow. and I believe a lot of it has to do with how I played the game, right? <laughs> oh, that's me. Um, yeah. So <laughs> I remember that day. It's fun. <laughs> so doing the agency is like, is like climbing a mountain, right? It really is. And some people, they choose the hard way. And some people, they just like grab on to the lines and the pins that are already in the mountain. They just grab, grab on, they put on their safety gear and they start climbing, right? They trust the path that has already been built. So Joel, I don't know if you guys have ever watched these shows where they do mountain climbing or they do like a serious like ice type climbing where somebody has to go up and they do what's called setting the lines. If you guys have ever watched like the Everest shows, they're called Sherpas. Somebody actually has to risk their life. They have to go up the mountain. They have to place each one of these things in place at the beginning of the season. And that is what allows the tourists to all fly there and then have this, you know, it's still, you're still climbing Everest. It's still difficult. There's still danger, but that's what allows them to actually go through it, be safe, take the, the well-charted route and have a predictable outcome, right? So Joel, for us in the agency world, has been that Sherpa. He has shown us what to do. So if you don't fight that or try to chart your own path, it's going to make you successful, right? So that's one piece of it. Yo, Vimo, uh, if your agency ever doesn't work out, you should just be a master slide maker. Oh, okay. <laughs> you're you're so good at it. All right. So um, I'm just kidding, by the way. Obviously, it's going to work out. I'm just saying. These are some pretty cool. good slides. 
Oh, thanks, man. Um, so in terms of like the four pieces, I feel like that allowed me to unlock this are really the intangibles, which Joel always talks about that you can't teach, right? You can take decks, you can create pillars, you can do all that. But if you give information to someone who really isn't prepared to receive it, it's just like giving someone a hundred leads who has no system to sell it, right? You have to lay that foundation. You have to be able to do the intangibles if you want to take advantage of what what we have in here. And so for me, what I think the intangibles are first is focus, right? how to focus on the right things. Second, mindset, hands down the most important. Three, you must truly care about what you're doing and the people that you're serving. It can't just be purely a money play, right? It can't just be purely for um, some desire of yours. You have to truly want to help people if you are going to achieve some level of success. And then the final piece is innovation, right? Innovation is hard to teach. It comes by very infrequently, but if you you can capitalize on it, you're going to be able to scale your agency very quickly. Um, so these three things are kind of what I wanted to jump into. Then we're going to go into tactics. So in terms of focus, don't reinvent the wheel, right? So we got all the answers to the test inside of the program. I will see people who come into the program and they are not following the path. They're not, uh, you know, going down and following each pillar. They may seek to do cold email when they already have revenue. That is not the name of the game. You have to know how to focus on the right things. In terms of the wheel, the wheel's there. Don't reinvent it. Follow the cheat sheet that Joel has built us. So I'm going to jump into what that is in just a minute. But again, focus. Mindset. So this is the other piece. Um, in terms of this, probably the biggest one. So this is why I talk about identity shift when you want to get to 100K. You, where If you are under 100K today and you're not like somewhere reasonably close, you know, 70, 80, 90K, if you're at like 10K, 20K, 30K, you literally have to be willing to and understand that it will take an identity shift for you to hit these numbers. How quickly you make that identity shift will allow you to reach this either either quicker or slower. You're either fighting the person you need to be to get to 100K or you are embracing the person you need to be to get to 100K, right? So this is where mindset is the absolute X factor. I'm so glad George is in there and he does the mindset piece. I'm so glad that Joel is the type of coach that can come on to this program and literally say, my number one thing that I'd recommend somebody best decision, you know, I've heard him say this before is, is getting a therapist, right? Um, like in terms of being able to coach yourself through the tough times. And just to, to the point, I know everyone's questioned what they've done because of a real outcome in the business. And there are things that should have you questioning what you're doing, but not who you are. Those are two different things. And the mindset allows you to not question who you are and why you're doing what you're doing. And it's very important to establish that first, if you want to be successful, that way people will not be able to do things that make you question who you are. To harp on this, when you guys hear me talk about it all the time, mindset is the absolute X factor in terms of getting to hundred K. You must care. This is another piece. We have a lot of clients. We've done a ton of MRR. But when I first started, I literally woke up one day and I said, if I'm going to make dentistry work, I have to do it with TikTok ads. I'm literally in one of the most saturated niches there is. I'm going to have to figure out a way to make this offer work. I literally started selling it. And from there, I started fulfilling it. And then from there, I put systems around it. And then from there, I hired people to run those systems that I put in place. Each one of those steps came because I truly cared about getting to the next piece and innovating and growing for the client and for myself, right? So don't be scared to take risks if you truly care, right? One of the biggest things that I see stop people from moving forward with an offer, running paid ads, or doing something is... They question what happens if they're not able to do what they said they would do in terms of a guarantee, in terms of like being able to fulfill. And the fact, if you question that and you are truly scared of that, that is good. That's when you know you care enough to move forward because you will figure it out. You just need a little bit more information in terms of clients, a little bit more revenue in terms of sales, or a little bit more team members or something else in order to figure that out. It's not that you don't want to do it. You're just not in the position to figure everything out right now. As long as you want to do it and you care, you genuinely feel that I would highly recommend 
that you lean on that fact in order to be able to go in and start selling things. And then finally, innovation is key, right? So this is a, right before we jump into the my, uh, tactically, some of the things that I want to talk about. Um, but innovation is definitely key to long-term success, right? I believe Joel uh, started talking about TikTok ads back in February. Uh, drop a one in the chat right now if you fulfill 100% on TikTok and that is your service. Drop a chat, drop a one in the chat right now. A lot of ones from Aaron. We got a half from Jock. It's not a lot of people, honestly, for being It's not honest. a lot of people. And and I, I the biggest thing and the biggest reason why I see most people uninterested uh, in doing TikTok is because there's not Scary. a carved out path, cut and paste, ready to go. You have to innovate. But with that being said, most people actually don't realize TikTok is much, much easier to fulfill on than these other platforms. One, but it's scarier. Correct. It's unknown. Yes. I you literally have, have mapped out offers for you guys that no one's done. And I'm like, someone run with these. And I feel like it's only ever like one or two of you guys that run with it. And then the people that do just crush. Sorry, keep going, Vimal. I didn't mean to. No, 100%. Okay. It needs to be said. I mean, and innovation is not, guys, it's not where, again, you're reinventing the wheel. Innovation Innovation is where you just do a little bit more than the other person, again, because you care. So I'm going to run it on TikTok ads. Okay, now we're getting leads. This is good. I need to figure out how to field them. Okay, now that we're fielding them, let's figure out how to increase the quality a little bit. Each one of those steps are happen because you care. You want to do a little bit better. So innovation comes from caring, wanting to do better and offering that best result. And it will force you to innovate because you want to stay ahead, right? So if you, you got to be willing to do that, you got to think, how can I do just a little bit more and be willing to take risks, lose money, invest time, uh, learn from people and uh, be the biggest thing is be willing to fail. The most people don't realize you get paid to fail faster than everyone else. If I can get in there, figure out TikTok and make it work quicker than everybody else, I'm going to get paid exponentially more by how much I actually, how quickly I was able to fail learn from that, implement things that actually work, right? You don't get paid for inquiring and coming up with a perfect result. That's kind of the, the mindset piece. All right, so here's where we're gonna get into some tactics, right? Offer is king. Um, I'm not sharing my screen, so that didn't work. So here we go, offer is king. So I wanted to go over probably one of the most recent things that I've been talking a lot about and getting a ton of questions on because no matter where you are at in your agency, I have scaled to 100K and I still run this offer and you can run it for from the beginning all the way to the end, as long as you know how to monetize it. So I wanted to go over this. Um, and most of you guys probably know it, the test drive method. So this is something that Joel like kept dropping literally in, in the group about Rise. And I'm like, man, if it got me to sign up, like why wouldn't I get other people to sign up? So I coined you know, it probably already works, but it's a test drive method, right? So if you've heard me talk about that, you guys want me to go over exactly how we frame it, how we test drive it, pitch it, and how to monetize it, uh, you're going to want to stick around uh, because that's what I'm going over right now. Let's see here. Okay, cool. So setting up the frame on TikTok. Uh, this is the biggest thing, um, whether, or sorry, not TikTok, on the test drive, whether you are offering it when you're new, you're offering it uh, when you're, when you're experienced, you're offering it on a new service. It requires a few things that will allow you to be able to do it successfully. Um, and the first is setting up your frame on that. So first, with that, never uh, do a one call close with this. I, I haven't been successful with it. Um, so I personally don't do it. For me, it, I like to build up the test drive aspect of it, slide it in at the end and make it seem like it's a really like all of a sudden offer that they're getting and they should probably just move forward on. So I do enough research and I set it up. Number two, any form of credibility that you have will work for the test drive offer. So if you want to go into Cairo and you don't have any experience in Cairo, but you've grown a lawn business, you've helped your mom's bake shop be able to grow online. It doesn't really matter. Talk about that. What makes you credible? and why you're willing to work for them for a discounted fee in the beginning to show them that you know what you're doing. Any form of credibility will work. And then when you start them, don't be afraid to make things happen. You have to get scrappy in the beginning, especially to the first 10K. Not every test drive is going to go well. Not every test drive is going to end in a customer signed. That's totally okay. So just kind of let it getting those things out of the way. Um, on the pitch, when you go to pitch a test drive, it's super important 
that you do the full sales demo, just like you were about to ask them for the two, $3,000 a month that you want them to pay you ultimately month two, because that's where the sale happens. And you have to convince them that it's still worth that amount of money. If you don't, they will sign up for your test drive and then they'll be like, well, the next month is too expensive though. Go through your entire pitch. Once you go through your entire pitch and you give them the full price of the program, what it would cost to typically move forward, pause, pause right there, see what they say, allow them to start talking at that point. They're going to say things like, oh, that's expensive. Can you guys do this? Can you guys do that? Start answering their questions and handling their, their objections from a place of genuine curiosity. Be like, no, no, I totally get that. Yeah, that, you know, in if this didn't ROI, I could see how that would be expensive. Let's talk a little bit of mechanics here. Talk to me about this, that, how it works. Make them feel like you're genuinely curiously interested in what they're doing here. Um, that is also important. That it, that comes naturally to me. I'm always very curious, so it's not hard. And once I act like I'm kind of curious, that's when I'm going to bait with the potential test drive opportunity. And how I always frame that is I say, hey, listen, um, based off of kind of what you've told me today, um, what we've gone over, I think the thing to do here might be actually just allow you to test drive our program. Um, so let me tell you what that looks like. We would actually run our entire system, everything we just went over here, you know, that most most people would pay two plus K per month to do plus the ad spend and all that. And just let you test drive it for 30 days. Um, and from there, we can make a data-driven decision on whether there's potential in your market. That's very important how you frame that. Is there potential in your market? Most people, you're not going to be able to get them results right out of the gate. They're not going to get cases accepted. You want to frame it as potential in the market. And when they say, okay, what does that mean? Potential in the market should be framed as your minimum deliverables. So for me, we typically get 50 to 60 leads. We typically get 10 patients a month in. So for me, I say, hey, look, if a market's responsive and it's actually responding to TikTok, we're going to see within 30 days, at least 30 to 40 leads come in. We're getting that initial two to three bookings and if we see that, we know your market responds in compounding into month two and three, we will see a good ROI. That's how I set it up. So I've cut my expectations in half and that is super important on how you actually do that. That is going to lead to you actually getting to month two. So setting expectations, again, this is the really big thing on top of setting the frame if you want to be successful with the test drives. Wait, can I, can I cut you in real quick? Yeah. Um, so guys, when Vimo was starting out, please think about what he did here a little bit more deeply. He made it easier for people to get started, not harder. When you're starting out, you have to make it easier for people to get started, not harder. As you evolve, you can make it harder for people to get started with you. And I've said this many times, until you have at least 10 clients, you should make it as easy as possible for people to say yes, not harder. And a lot of you guys are fighting yourselves by trying to like collect money right now, which is fair. I understand where that's coming from and why you want to do that. But you're shooting yourself in the foot because then you can't build momentum. You can't get the experience. You can't get the results required to actually start closing clients at full price. Bimo, I know you also did it at a lower price first, right? Yes, I did it. You're going to talk about that. Uh, I, I no, but I can quickly. Um, so with my test drives, the truth is, so my entire pricing structure, I charge 2k per month. Now I started at free with my, and guys, I started at free with my entire offer. It wasn't like a reactivation campaign. I did my entire offer. I set at them up a GHO. I launched the campaign. I called for free. The myself for free for 30 days for 30 days. Yeah. In the beginning. And that was because I did it all myself. And I'm not saying go to that extreme, but that's what I mean. Like be willing to do something to build yourself. Be willing to do the dirty work. Exactly. Exactly. If you want to look like Vimmel and have the nice cars, you got to be willing to get your hands a little dirty. You know? Hey, hey Vimmel, a uh, really quick question. Yeah. Um, with your test drive, did you offer that to everyone? Yes, everyone gets offered the test. Everyone drive. gets offered even the now. Test drive. Yes, even now. So, so Vimo, a uh, follow up question to that. Um, in your front facing ads, is that something you're advertising, or is it the more so the guarantee um that you're that you're pushing? I just advertise TikTok ads for dentists. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. Um. It's pretty, and I don't talk about a guarantee really in the headline. I do put full 30 day trial if, okay. and, and I put full instead of free, because now I do charge $500 to come on the trial just to at least liquidate some ad spending costs. But when I first started, it was hundred percent free. 
Okay, so you started with free trial, then you moved on to a low cost. 699. 699 management. Yep, plus ad spend. And then you moved on to full pay. Correct, yes. And at 699, I was getting so many customers that I got experience quickly and I could naturally just do it to- When did you transition from free trial to 699? That was literally like within my first four or five customers because I knew what to do at that point. I knew what how to set it up. Okay, love it. So four to five, just to get started, free 30-day trials, then $6.99. Make it still easy for people to get started. We did this too, $500 first month, then it went up. But you did $6.99 on forever, right? It was like, mm-hmm. okay, like, so you made it even easier to get started than what I did. I used to do $500 first month, then $2K a month. But you did $6.99 forever. Then you moved up to $2K a month. At like how many customers? How many did you have before you moved to 2K a month. I know it was quite a bit at that point. Um, by the time we had got to like 25, 30 customers, uh, I was at that point. And I knew I needed to raise my price in order to get be able to pay a team to handle them in more business. Got it. Okay, cool. And then did they cover the ad spend on the free trial? Yes, always. How much? I make them come in at a minimum of 1500. You want to set yourself up to be successful. You can't ask for just a tiny bit. You want to call the shots on a test drive or a free trial. Hey, this is what it takes. This is what it takes to see if your market's responsive. I'm going to do the work for free. I'm coming in and in 30 days from now, I want to make sure that you're paying me. So I'm going to work extremely hard. Yeah, this is awesome. Thank you for sharing. I just, uh, I think most people make it way too hard on too hard on themselves. So you advertise TikTok ads for dentists, no guarantee, no trial, just the hook of TikTok ads. You get people on the phone, you say, hey, we'll take them through the whole process. And then at the end, you're like, yo, it's free for 30 days. And they're like, okay, fuck yeah. Why wouldn't I do this? I'd be an idiot not to. Because you took them through the whole process. Exactly. Then after four to five customers, you're like, all right, let me charge a little bit, $6.99 a month forever. Still making it really easy. It's like, yo, Bimmel's legit. He's got a cool office, really nice guy. Seems to know what he's talking about. He's gotten clients previous results, $6.99 a month. Hell yeah. Then after a while, you're like, okay, I can't do this. 699 month thing anymore because we're getting way too many clients. Then you switch to 2K a month. 100%. So, all right, guys, there's a formula. <laughs> <laughs> um, Wait, all right. So, I let me breeze through the rest more. of this really quick. Here, guys, if you have a question, drop it in the chat. I'm, I, there's time for questions as soon as I'm done because we're almost done. Setting expectations, super important. Big thing you don't want to do on test drives is over promise. Don't set yourself up for failure. This is the worst thing you could do on a test drive. Do not oversell somebody to put them on a trial. Make sure that they understand that you will work very hard. Show them what's in the market. Their money's in the best hands. And outside of that, set the expectations low on what they want to see and be proactive in following up with them. And then finally, here's the big part. How do we monetize the test drive, right? It's extremely important you come up with a PIF option because people who have good test drives should not continue on to month two on the normal retainer. If they do it well and versus charging them 2K per month, you hit them up month two and say, hey, I know you like what you saw. I know you're about to move forward. Why don't I do this for you? Instead of you paying 2K per month, let's lock you in for the next three for five. You are going to save and get your big payment then. They're all ready. If they're staying with you after a test drive, they believe in you. Getting that PIF at that point is probably the easiest thing you will ever do. They literally just think they're saving money, but you make a ton of money from it and you have less risk on the Wait, back. I, so how much is it? The what? The PIF. Five grand. For how long? For three months, instead of continuing at 2K per month for the next three months. Are you still doing a test drive? I'm confused. Yes. Yes. Test drive goes all the way up after the end of the 30 days. Wait, wait, wait. So right now, when you onboard a client, you're still doing a 30-day free. Yep. Right now. Right now. So today, you're saying, yo, 30-day free trial, then 2K a month. Yes. Before, you did 30-day trial, then $6.99 a month. Correct. Got it. That's great clarification. And then right now, you're saying, okay, if you want to skip the 2K a month, pay 5K for three months. No. I'm saying at the end of the test drive, if they had a good test drive, capitalize on that by locking them in with a PIF versus letting them roll over into month two for just 2K. Mm. Because instead of letting them auto renew at month two for the two grand, the goal is to hit them up because you know they're going to renew. They've already had a good experience. And then you get, say, hey, instead of paying 2K for the next three months, you've already had a good experience. You know you're going to stay, pay five right now. Okay, save a thousand. Yeah. Okay, okay, guys, guys, guys. Quick step back, quick step back. This is really important. Please, please, please listen to this. You know how Vimal talked about innovating on the frameworks? It's not just TikTok ads. It's also looking at what, I share and asking yourself, how can I do it a little bit better? I just said, do a $500 first month. Or I said, Hey, do a seven day free trial. Bimbo said, you know what? I'm going to make that better. He said, Joel, I'm going to beat you, which I love. Don't worry. We're still friends. He said, Joel, I'm going to, I'm going to destroy you. Seven day trial. Nah, we're going to do a 30 day trial even now for everyone. And then on top of a 30 day trial, it's like $6.99 a month. 
of course people are going to say yes. Then now that he knows what he's doing, 2K month, if they like you after the trial, of course they're going to say yes. Okay, after that, if they really, really like you, they'll pay five grand in full for three months, save a thousand. They already know they're going to stay. They already know they're going to do it for three months. That's savage. Guys, can we just like give Vimal a round of applause for coming up with that? Just unmute yourself real quick. Just real quick, please. Savage. Oh, yeah, man. So that is actually, dude, that let's, is so let's, smart. Let's, Incredible. Let's, 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 and then, let's keep that private to this program okay don't worry i won't i won't, I won't post a video about it <laughs> that's a good call <laughs> if Vimo wants to post about it that's on him you know i can't yeah, stop that's the secrets y'all so that's that's how we did it that's how we scaled quickly that's some sauce right there that's how we suck people in on the front Vimo's end almost bringing the sriracha today hot sauce <laughs> let's go um all right so oh, i like that next slide dude. <laughs> that? These are so good <laughs> Yeah. Number one question I get asked, should I switch niches? I don't have the answer to this question. I did it. So I'm not going to say no. So I'm going to give you some guidelines for doing it. Speak the language. When I went into dental, I was a dental assistant for six years. I worked in an office for six years. I know how to talk to a dentist. I know every procedure they do. I know what distalizers mean on Invisalign. I know what UCFs are. I know how much they pay. If you can talk to somebody in their language, you will knock them down for sales left and right like it's nobody's business, especially a sophisticated market that has jargon. So if you know a market really good, go with that. Uh, where can you solve problems? Be honest about that. I knew what dentists needed and I like TikTok. And then hot opportunities you can relate to. Don't chase shiny objects, right? Like chase opportunities that you can relate to because that's what's going to allow you to innovate much easier and faster than the rest of the people attempting that off, right? And then final thoughts, I only have one. Everyone should stop fucking around and run paid ads. That's the only way you're Let's gonna- Let's fucking go. Yeah, never that again. look back, all right? So I'm gonna drop you guys a cheat sheet on how I set up all my ads. I'm gonna Can put I it get in a cheat sheet on how you make your slides? <laughs> Um, so I'll drop this in there, but this and guys do not go yet. I have, we're going to raffle the, the TV and I've got a crazy spec two two surprises for you guys, actually two massive ones that if you enjoyed this workshop, you're going to be really, really happy about. Oh shit. You build the whole cheat sheet. Yeah. So this is the cheat sheet here. This is my Facebook bonus. If you guys want to get into paid ads for client acquisition, I broke down my entire ad and what I do and how I think about it. So this is the ad, right? Creative, number one most important real estate when running a campaign, okay? So it should call out your audience, your offer, right? You want a CPL or CTR of 2% or better. Um, so I broke this down. Take a look at it. Number two most important is your headline, what to put for CTAs, what above the fold primary text needs to uh, contain, and anything below the text as well too. What you guys should look for for CTRs and conversion rates also in here. I just dropped that in the chat. A lot of you guys have asked me about client acquisition ads, how to set them up, how I get CPLs. This is my exact strategy when I look at it. Do you an think ad. that people are overcomplicating it? Yes, a lot. Because um, I feel like you're just like, okay, you're going to run an ad and then like a 30 day trial. And then like, yeah, if, you, if they like the results, you know, $6.99. And then, all right, well, we have too many of those. Let's bump it up 2 k And oh, we have too many of those. Let's bump it up 3 k eventually. And all right, that's pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> like skill to 100k a month see you guys there you go that was the master class in a nutshell <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah. you guys are overthinking it think outside and if you're gonna think think outside the box a little bit it's point number two number three run paid ads number four make it easier for people to get started 100k a month there you go